So um, I, I, I've done a lot of different things and not really ever stuck with too much too for too long. <laughs> Yay. I am so excited to see everybody's face. So let's dive in. Marlene, we will start with you. I'm just going to pull up our lips here and here. Whoop. Where? Where are you? Here we come. Everybody can see that? Yep. Here we go. So end of slideshow. Whoop. Beginning of slideshow. Here now, here we go. Technology. <laughs> sometimes it's our friend and sometimes yeah. it's not. <laughs> Marlene, here we go. Yeah, I started off in the forest. I This is actually a less than three minute walk from my house. And uh, so I am in a really rural area. This is the beginning of a network of incredible trails. So we haven't really felt too hemmed in with this, um, with isolating because we've been able to get out and about in, in this incredible space. And I also wanted to share it too because um, the forest really and the ocean really dictates um, my kind of mart making. Oh, and this is the only clean spot in my house. Uh, this is the spot where I practice yoga and um, yoga is a big part of my life. I also teach yoga and one of the things that I've done lately is sort of pivoting as well. Um, um, by teaching online uh, from that space. So that's been kind of fun. Oh, and I've jumped on the bandwagon. I'm trying to grow things. Uh, again, with it being a rural community, we have less access to stuff and our grocer said to start growing a garden. So we did. And then I just wanted to share this because I'm so excited because we're about to turn this into our um, living space. Uh, in the next couple of days here, we'll have a whole dining and kind of living space out here. This is where we live as soon as the weather starts to change and you can see why. So wow. even though I'm an abstract painter and I love the forest and the ocean, um, you, you can see in my abstract work uh, quite a bit, you can see the influences of nature. There are my ladies, this is my studio. So they're supposed to be in a show coming up. They were in a couple of shows last year. They're from a Blind Contour homage series celebrating female Canadian artists, um, but they're sitting in my studio with me right now instead of being up on the walls my desk space and you can see the mural behind me oh this is another thing that we've done we've kind of pivoted this is tv magic this is us yesterday um taping i've been doing some um videos art instructional videos online and then i was going to tidy this up but i decided nope i'm going to show you guys the real thing <laughs> this is where i paint <laughs> i'm really messy and um i paint with oil and yeah i've been working on some really large pieces i really don't know where i'm going right now with stuff that's another thing we could maybe talk about um i've had a lot of really vivid dreams and um really rich colors are coming into my palette right now which is really unusual for me so it's just a big experiment i'm trying to let myself just be there and be gentle and see where it goes. There's my lovely uh, Thrive encouragement. And that's my thinking chair and my big pile of books because you have to have one of those. Um, and then I also added this in because this is kind of part of my practice and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about it too. I, I always light an incense stick and I have a little altar, you know, in my studio, just a little spot so I can kind of end my um, time, a di my day and start my painting session. I'd love to hear what you guys do. Interesting. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you for that tour. Uh, Tannis, you're all set. Okay. Here we go. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to pause this because I can hear that our sound is coming in. Oh. So, one sec. Don't want double duty. Yeah. Uh, well, computer sound is off. I don't know why that's coming through. Mm -mm. Share computer sound is off. You could hear that, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if there's a way. I think if I turn my sound down, I'm going to... Uh... Here, I'll pause the recording. Tannis, you ready to walk us through your space? Yes, I am. Here we go. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, I've been working at home during the coronavirus and I share this home with two cats and my husband. We're, we live in Burnaby, BC. And this is our living room. That's Rick. Hi, Rick. 
And when we moved here, I had this vision of this whole salon style wall of art. So it's a mix of my father's work and my work and other artists work. A lot of my current work is nostalgia based just because um, it's been a bit, a bit of a rough time the past year and a half losing family, etc. Similar to Marlene, this is becoming our new living room for the summer. Yay, we have a lovely deck area. So, so lucky during this isolation to be able to have an outdoor space. Kitchen for me is also like a studio because I love to cook. It's very creative for me. It's another outlet, very inspirational with lots of cookbooks. And so we go down to the basement, which is where I'm lucky enough to have my workspace. And here it is. It's um, a fairly good sized room with a work table and wall to pin on. And uh, I do share this space though with the cats. They come down here at night and sleep at night. So you can see lots of cat evidence as well, <laughs> which makes it tricky sometimes. Lots of storage, which is good. Very cluttered storage. And uh, there's my other cat, Jasper. There's a piano in the room and a non-working fireplace, but it makes a nice focal point. And then I also have um, a work area for my computer, which is sort of back to back with the painting area. So that I used to freelance there, so I did both. And Sophie's always yeah. wherever I am. <laughs> I use my iPad a lot these days, um, doing abstract work, just playing with it, but also um, using the stylus. I also do a lot of prep drawings for paintings that I have ideas for. This is a series I've been working on, kind of isolated figures on a Quebec winter landscape, because I grew up in Quebec. And so these are a combination of acrylic and pastel, actually, these pieces. I'm going to be continuing to work on the series based on that. More nostalgia art. This is Julia Child and her sister Dorothy in Paris. And then, uh, just a painting I have pinned on the wall right now of me in my yellow rain hat. <laughs> and then another piece which is very much representative of the time. It's um, a real isolated feel. It's from a night scene in a beach. Surrounded by pictures of family and travel knickknacks and tons of supplies. And being that I'm a cook and an artist, I tend to paint food as well. So this is a an impasto painting I did recently from nostalgic restaurant Schwartz's Deli with Montreal smoked meat. Nice. So that's it for me. Yay. I love how rich and diverse these spaces are. And here we are at the, uh, at the farmhouse. Laura and Karen all set to go? Yep. And here we go. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> We live in a 125-year-old farmhouse in very rural Ontario, about 45 minutes east of Ottawa. Um, this is our kitchen living space. Um, it's the, really the only space in the house that we don't use as an art-making space. Everything else has been co-opted in some form or another. Um, this is the second floor landing where we do all kinds of um, fabric work, knitting, um, anything that goes with beading, that kind of thing. I did a series of neck bangles a few years ago. Um, we still use our mother's uh, very old sewing machine. And now we're going up to the third floor uh, where there's a loft space and that's really my space. I store my cameras up there and you can see it's been really taken over a little bit by the Lego, um, which is, <laughs> it happens that way. But I can use that space, all the work area. Um, it's, there's tons of storage in there because of the sloping roof and so on. Um, I use my computer up there as well. Um, and I keep, like very much like Tannis, I keep lots of things that I like to look at close by. This is just above my desk. So shells, skulls, you name it. I've got all kinds of stuff sitting around there. Um, and if we just looked out the window, you would see the river. Um, this is a series that I did a few years ago called Interrupted Sky, um, where there were pictures of sky with things in them. I work primarily in black and white. Floor. Okay, so now we're, we're taking you outdoors because we have a decent sized property with two acres, um, and we're just coming up to our chickens. <laughs> um, and, you know, of course, the 
access to the outdoors really informs our work. So it's, it's a very important aspect of our lives and our art. Um, the coop that Karen is just going into, we actually designed and built and then, you know, painted it purple and orange. <laughs> <laughs> we get fresh eggs every day from our chickens. Oh. This is uh, the front of the house, the main house. Um, so you can see a, a little bit the spaces around us. We have a fair bit of space. It's really awesome. Little greenhouse. We also, of course, we have a, a huge vegetable garden. So we're trying to grow as much of our food as we can. Um, and of course, all the plants that work our way in, work their way into our art as well. Uh, that's a current project. We are working on making fence panels out of willow that we've cultivated from the property. Um, this is a, the work, what we call a workshop. It's a, really a garage that the former owner converted into a studio. It's got a, like a, a, a kiln in it and so on. It's huge. It's very cold in the winter, um, <clears throat> but there's lots of space to do messy projects. So there's our woodworking tools are there. Our paper storage is there. There's a, a gallery above. These are bowls that I have been gathering to um, make things with. This is my painting studio. It's another little separate building. It's where I do my photography for, you know, shooting the art. And that's my little painting area. Here are some of the bowls that Karen created that you can actually see maybe behind us here. Um, this is a, a series that I'm working on called Plant Life. And it's an exploration of the energy of plants. And I'm really enjoying these. These are really fun. They're sort of multimedia. Oh, and I've also created prints so that I can sell prints for my website. Um, this came out of that same series, but it's a painting. And the colors, if you see the dots, are going to change color. Those are uh, embedded fiber optics. So there's a little battery pack behind, and you can turn the painting on and off. And it, again, it's the energy of the plant that I'm trying to capture. These are some, some of my more um, traditional landscape um, figure work. And uh, a recent project, we had a lot of fun doing this, where we printed from the actual plants. So we just you know, spread paint on a plant or a leaf and printed it directly on the paper. That was fun. Well, there are dogs. You want to go up. Nice, right on. Oh, how cool is that? So we've gone from like urban oasis to ocean view coastal farmhouse in Ontario. I'm sitting, I, I did the tour of my place on our last session. So if you want to see that, just scoot back to the last video. But uh, I'm sitting on top of a mountain where even now we're, we're in May as we're filming. And uh, it was dumping snow again yesterday, just like I think Tannis, I sent you a video. It, I'm like, how is this still happening? So, so we're all tucked in. Is everybody is everybody working and tucked in through this, through these last eight weeks? Have we been home studioing and how has that been? Well, for us, it's not really a huge change. We literally live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So the, the only real change is that we don't have visitors, which we're, we're used to having a lot of visitors. Um, but other than that, as far as art making is concerned, it hasn't interrupted us at all. No. At yeah. all. So that's fine. Yeah. In fact, there have been fewer interruptions in some ways with no visitors coming. We just don't clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's handy. <laughs> that lops off a good chunk of time every day. <laughs> Especially with a house like that. That's so, like, it's magical. It's just very... But it, for us here, it's, it's very early spring. I mean, we've got maybe two daffodils open. Mm -hmm. um, and there's snow in the forecast for tonight. Oh. Um, so, you know, as, but as soon as the garden gets going, that tends to co-opt our time a great deal. So, yeah, yeah. You know. And Marlene, for you, has this created a big change for you? Um, it's kind of a yes and no. Like it's it's like some parts of my daily life will I'll just be spending time doing something and I don't even remember that we're in a pandemic. And then another time I'll be like this is kind of slap in the face, you know, like a hit, like a complete roller coaster. I mean, yeah. my studio's at home as well, so I I'm still working. Um, 
I came off of a huge project. The, the ladies that I showed you in my video were um, a, a big project of 32 pieces of an homage series for Canadian uh, female artists. And so I came off of that just as this started. So I was feeling kind of a bit of a void. You know what I mean? Anyways, you know that feeling when you finish something, you've got this yeah. huge focus and then that focus is gone. And then I kind of, then you kind of add this pandemic thing, uh, you know, along with it and not complaining because it's like, oh, poor me. But I just feel like I feel a little lost still. I yeah. feel um, a little like I'm having a hard time kind of um, really figuring out what my next step is. And I know I have to give myself permission for that. And I think we all know that as, as artists, that that's a part of the process, right? But um, yeah. I do feel that sort of added strangeness around it because um, of how I'm feeling about my loved ones and, you know, the state of the world. So, yeah. 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 Really. <clears throat> and Tannis? Yeah. And, and for me, um, I normally would be going to my studio at Parker Street, but I'm lucky that I have both spaces that I can work in. And... Um, this past year and a half, I went through some health issues and losing my mother. And so I was found myself, I was really removed from my art practice for a while. And I was just starting to get back into it when this hit. So it's kind of, oh no, another interruption. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I'm just really getting going again. And, and like, like you guys said, Karen, Laura, actually the lack of interruptions, the lack of seeing people has helped create more focus, which is good. So while it's interrupted, it's also given me peace, you know, the space um, mentally. I'm just finding it emotionally hard, though. I, I do say that some days I just don't feel art makes sense to be doing in this time, you know, and then other times I think it's the most important thing to be doing this time. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. always do. Yeah, I'm experiencing a similar oscillation right now and uh, it took me a while to get all my art stuff set up up here I had a I was in a shared studio in town um, and uh, and part of pulling up up here on this mountaintop has been um, it it's it's refocused me on a lot of things that I feel are important and I'm uh, I don't know where this is going to go you know as of today they're talking about opening things up gradually, I hope. Um, and, you know, I, I am no scientist. I don't know the realities of everything that's going on. But for me as a person, I've really appreciated this time. And I've nestled in and, uh, and there are parts of me that really like it. And, and I haven't been typically in this space and, and isolated. And, uh, and yeah, I'm finding huge value in it while still being a little you know, while still being impacted by the, the um, fear of what's going on. I noticed that a couple of you talked about things like shows you had scheduled or things that you had going. What have been the biggest shifts? Like Marlene, you are doing some filming. Was that planned before this or is that a result of this? How have things changed? Yeah, I teach as well, um, and uh, so I lost a lot of my teaching jobs this spring, um, including our annual um, retreat to Spain in September. We had to cancel that. That was a really hard decision. It was it would have been our fifth. Um, it's an art yoga retreat for you guys who don't know, um, and it's uh, I did with Marlene Vermeulen, and it's just such a magical experience. So we had to, of course, um, back away from that. So it's funny you say that because I. I was sort of thinking the same thing. I was in the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh, maybe one of these days I'd like to do some video, you know, online teaching, but it just seemed like such a huge project. And, but then I got asked by um, Plastis Art and Coquitlam to do a series of five and it was like, okay, let's just make it happen. So <laughs> kind of crash course. So it's kind of been a little bit of a silver lining that, hey, this is doable. And, you know, it's not, it's not, it's a big project. Yes, but it's, it's something that I could maybe manage. And maybe it's, it's like, uh, I'm learning about it. And maybe it's something that will fuel me to do the ones that I kept thinking in my mind that I don't have the time for, or I don't know how to do. So that's been a good silver lining. So maybe that will be part of my, you know, going forward is to actually present online classes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in the farmhouse, what's, uh, has it changed as far as your actual, your getting your work out to the world or the interaction with the world? No, not really. Uh, what I found was, because I was in the middle of, I was doing a lot of writing when it hit. And I was, ended up being really grateful for that because 
whether you're writing or you're creating art, I was in the middle of a project, a big project. And so I was very focused and that helped me kind of put blinders on, you know, I'm not hearing the news and I'm not being affected because I'm, I have a thing I have to do here. And yeah. I found that I ended up cause I'm now I'm finished. So I know what you're talking about. That sort of feeling when you finished a big project, how you go like, uh, now what do I do? But, but while I was doing it, it was great. It, that was, you know, got me through it very easily. You yeah. know, art will do that for you. A big I, project and being focused really helps. I'm yeah. so interested with you, Laura, because if I if this had happened uh, uh, two months ago, I would have been fine, right? Because I was so focused as well. Yeah. 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 It's interesting for us as art. I kind of wonder, like in 1918, I wonder how the artists handled it then. You know, did they dive into projects and get... Uh, introspective as I think we all tend to do at times it's um be interesting to know and Karen are you having the I, I'm finding you know the online life I mean you're talking about the difference between 1918 and now um there people just had to write letters here we can well we're, we're communicating now right across the country um so I don't think no it, I don't think it has changed it hasn't changed me what, what it has done is, is taken me more than a day to do the shopping because, you know, of the lines and so on. So those little practical things are kind of niggly. And um, like Laura, I, I try not to listen too much to the news because that repetition of all that horrible stuff is um, distracting and distressing. So, um, you know, focus on what's in front of us and, and go from there and, and really, there's never a chance to be bored in our lives. And I think that's true of most creatives. Yeah. And your chickens and dogs help with that, I'm sure. <laughs> also a bunch of space. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for you, Tez? Well, because I was really sort of on hold for the past year or so, um, I'm just really getting going again. So it's more for me about doing the work. Um, I didn't have anything planned. Um, so it hasn't interrupted my... Um, my outward practice, but it has interrupted my inward practice, I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it is an interesting time. And uh, I'm just, for me, I'm super grateful to have all of these things to, you know, between painting and, and uh, printmaking. And when, when, uh, when I'm not feeling it for those things, I'm finding I'm sitting and playing my guitar and just kind of um, getting re grounded and uh, and appreciating it so so it's interesting to hear how you are all um, it sounds like sort of as a consensus we are aware um, but we're doing what we can to protect ourselves from the the story and and spending time I, I relate Marlene to something you mentioned earlier about right now not knowing what it is you want to be doing or are meant to be doing but you're just allowing yourself the freedom to whatever comes out you know because um I think that's part of being in this environment right now is we have to allow ourselves that and, and not, not be trying to do a set sort of series of work. Um, so if you want to interrupt and, and do something completely off, you know, in a different direction, then we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it, comes, it also helps what Carol said earlier too about priority, right? Like what is your priority? And, um, and, yeah. and so maybe allowing, maybe taking all the shoulds, and shoving them off to the side and then just kind of allowing, allowing to see what, see what comes through. Everybody yeah. else found, found themselves sort of in a, in soul searching mode. Yes. You know I mean, where, where, um, because I know that happened to me. I finished a big project and then I was like, okay, I'm just in and that, mm, no, maybe not. And I needed to take the time to, to really think about, what I want to do next, what actually appeals to me to do next, because there's this freedom to choose right now, right? Because there's no other distractions, there are no shows, there, there's, there's no pressure at all in one way. And so yeah. I found there's a, a certain freedom to actually discover what you really need to be doing for, your, for yourself, you know, which is, of course, translates into hopefully a gift to the world, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're working from you know, your heart space, mm -hmm. then it, it changes everything. And mm -hmm. I think that's another silver lining. 
Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people have said uh, there'll be this big Corona boomer generation of children <laughs> that will be born in about eight months. Um, <laughs> but I think there's also probably going to be a Corona boom of creativity. You know, I think we're all we're all, uh, you know, life just said, go to your studio and uh, and we're all responding in our own way. So I really appreciate hearing, having you open up your homes and your 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 ways of working with us. It's really interesting to see. And uh, I am honored that you did that. Where would people find all of you online if they are, I'll put it in the show notes, uh, but where would they go to find you online? <laughs> some of you did some homework for this. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. well, I'm easy. I'm easy. Oh, you go ahead. At lauradenhertalk.com. There you go. <laughs> Everything's there. My, my blog is on the website. Um, everything is there. All, all my social media links, everything's there. I can't wait to check out your blog. I love the whole journaling idea. And yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on that right after we finish recording. <laughs> um, I, I, just because we're still on the screen. Um, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a website, but I do have an Instagram account and that's linked to my Facebook page. Um, <clears throat> so pretty much whatever grabs my fancy ends up on that. And I, I tend to shoot, um, things that I know my friends will be amused at. So yeah, uh, it's, fine. it's, it's a, a very really personal good. space rather than, you know, this is what I'm doing today kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. right on. Marlene? I'm easy. It's MarleneLoudon.com is my website and of course, and the same name for my Instagram. I do um, hop on Facebook every once in a while, but definitely on Instagram more than, than anything else. Yeah. yeah. I'm exactly the same, TanisHopkins.com or TanisHopkins on Instagram. Yeah. Right on. Yay. And I'm Carol McQuaid Art, the website, the Instagram and the Facebook, but I like Marlene, I am way more Instagram now. I just like to get up in the morning and get my fix of everybody's art. So thank you all of you who, who put your stuff on there. I love seeing it. Uh, the, um, the sessions we're doing, Artists in Residence Live um, has its own YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook as well. So if you're looking for uh, notifications of when our next watch party is, it's at Artists in Residence Live. So we'll be back next Saturday. We're going to keep going while we, uh, we're just going to see where it goes, see how, how we're responding to the situation that's happening. But loved having all of you on. And uh, for those of you who are watching us on our watch party, Thanks for joining us. We're super um, honored that you are spending your time with us. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay.